got Officer Shu in the back of a vehicle. He was actually in the parking lot. We're good, we're good, we're good. And within just a few seconds of that is when I heard gunshots. Our other photographer, Corey, he was right here. They definitely shot here at CMPD Airport. The suspect is still alive. Multiple crews there uh, bringing us this live footage. Giannis, I'm still shaking a little bit because I'm really in disbelief. They believe by using these paintballs, they're able to give people an opportunity to hash things out without using real guns. If I catch you at the gas station pumping your gas and I tag your car, now you win. I don't come on camera. Hey, don't touch our cameras. In the span of two hours, try and understand what you're doing here and why you have so many more toes than any other location in the city. Is that telling you that we do good work? Scott and Erica, this is stunning. This is like the geyser in Yellowstone. Look at this water shooting out of the ground 25 feet into the air. It's sin and it separates our kids from God. You didn't open this. Your time is up, sir. Your time is up. Real. You know, it's been a dream, but once I see the rain, I'm going to wake up and be like, you really good at your state tournament. I feel like I won a lottery on those. I'm just so excited. Yeah. Running to make their day hard? Why'd you run? Because I'm scared. They was holding the dog. Put the gun down. I was like, all right, it don't properly like, pull it down. Then they turn the damn dog loose. <laughs> Finally breaking the record on a last second layup. So come to every single game and cheer us on through wins and losses, um, through bad seasons, whatever. Um, you know, I wanted them to be the ones to get the opportunity to witness it. Take a look at this video. You can see Julie struggling in this marsh, in the water, up to her neck. Crews had to come out with a rope and a boat. They started chopping up the ice with a chainsaw and a hammer. Eventually, with the help of a stretcher, they were able to drag the cow out of this marsh. Marsh. The cow was then standing up, able to walk, and was returned to her pasture. While Justice Woods and the Knights are cooking up something special this season. Basil pesto tortellini with grilled chicken. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> I used to love to eat all the time. My mom didn't always make food for me when I wanted it, so I just decided to start cooking on my own. Just fell in love with it. My sister and I used to have uh, cooking competitions with each other. We'd pretend like we'd own our own restaurant and our parents would taste test our food. It was fun and I just kept going with it afterwards. I'd like to think that I'd win more. Maybe it's a bit of a stretch to draw comparisons between talent on the football field and in the kitchen. I always wanted to win and probably just to make the best food that I can and same translation on the field, be the best player that I can. Pass is about done. I don't even know if anybody else on my team can cook. <laughs> Mixing this stuff is an arm workout in it of itself. So might add more if I need. Mostly a stress reliever. You know, just a hobby of mine that I've come to enjoy. Let's see how this tastes. It's actually really good. I can sit down and eat this whole thing. <laughs> Probably will once you guys leave. <laughs> The road to Charlotte is covered in construction equipment, paving the way for tolls by the end of the year. But it's as controversial as any project we've seen. So we hit the road to check out a similar project. Late last year, Virginia's Department of Transportation started tolling a nine mile stretch of I-66 that feeds into Washington, D.C. Just like I-77, at any second, the price can change. In the planning stages, VDOT said the average toll would be $17 round trip on that stretch. When we were there just one week ago, that wasn't the case. In the evening rush hour, the toll hit $16.50 one way. If you think that's bad, just wait. The next morning, we spotted 35, 36, even $37 tolls. It's absolutely egregious. Lee Carter is a Virginia delegate from Manassas, a town of around 41,000, many of whom rely on 66 to get to and from work. He's a fierce critic of the tolls and the unpredictable dynamic pricing that will soon be in Charlotte. It's not a big inconvenience for people who make $4 million a year. 
it is a big inconvenience for people who make $30,000 a year. High price aside, Carter says tolling I-66 hasn't helped with congestion and has actually sent more traffic on the local streets. I have no idea how anyone justifies it. VDOT says the toll lanes offer a predictable travel time. And while the price may be high, some drivers are glad to have the option because before I-66 was told, only carpools were allowed on this nine-mile stretch. I think it's a benefit because, you know, anyone can take the toll road now. 66 has other benefits that some Charlotte drivers may find more appealing. Carpools with two or more people can use 66 for free. 77 will require three or more. 66 is only told during rush hour. 77 will be tolled all the time. And all I-66 tolls benefit the state instead of going to a foreign company like Sintra, which is building I-77's express lane. Well, this is the political equivalent of eating your kale. Kurt Noss is leading the charge to stop I-77 tolls. Earlier this month, he and nine others on an advisory board recommended that the state cancel the deal and make one of the toll lanes free. That would still leave one toll lane, but the profits would stay in state instead of going to Sintra, which is based in Spain. It's not the ideal solution that we want, but on the other hand, it gets us out from under a 50 year contract and it, and it puts a, a public, the public in charge of these tolls as opposed to a private foreign company. The fate of I-77 ultimately rests in Governor Roy Cooper's hands. And back in Virginia, Lee Carter has some advice. Don't do this. It's a horrible idea. Learn from our mistakes. And by the end of the summer, we will likely find out whether the governor listens to it. Just tell me for you why you why don't you want to come on camera? Hey, don't touch our camera. That okay. the man running this tow truck company was literally patrolling the parking lot outside South End's tavern on the tracks in the span of two hours. His crews towed six vehicles. I'm trying to understand what you're doing here and why you have so many more tows than any other location in the city. Is that telling you that we do good work? Channel 9 requested towing records from CMPD dating back to the start of last year. We found more than 28,000 calls reporting illegally parked vehicles. The calls originated from more than 3,000 different locations. The top three, 1100 South Boulevard with 332 calls to police. 9800 University City Boulevard has 650. And 1400 South Tryon Street, the parking lot for Tavern on the Tracks, top the list with 1,038 calls for towing. I had to pay in cash, 300 bucks, only in cash. Anna Cullum says she had dinner at Tavern on the Tracks a few months ago, walked to a nearby bar and returned to find her vehicle about to be towed. She paid the tow truck company $300 that night. He said he makes more money than anybody he knows that, went, that has a college degree. The parking lot is marked extensively with signs that say Tavern on the Tracks parking only. But we had to ask. Do, do most tow truck companies hang out like this in a parking lot waiting for that opportunity to tow? I don't know how the other people operate. But that's what you do. Look at the parking lot. There are plenty of open spaces at midnight this Friday. But the towing company keeps calling police, getting authorization to tow more vehicles. This man begs not to be towed and reaches for his wallet to pay up. $200 and then what do you have? Carolina Towing has a C rating with the Better Business Bureau. They have an exclusive contract to patrol this parking lot. Why is the parking company you hire so aggressive towing cars out here? Um, well, they have rules to follow. Bill Aquario owns Tavern on the Tracks. He told me parking became an issue as the South End exploded with development. So if you park in his lot and walk anywhere other than his business, you'll likely get towed in about 20 minutes. Dude, that's why all these signs are up. You know, I've got a sign probably every 10 feet around the building on, and all the entrances, so there's fair warning. You are the number one tow location in all of Charlotte. Does that surprise you? It does. It does, I'll be honest with you. It surprises me. Oh, it's predatory. This former customer lives across the street and says the towing strategy is too aggressive. He was towed while in the restaurant. They take it within 15, 20 minutes. Aquario denies the towing is predatory, but towards the end of our interview, he did offer an apologetic message. There are apologies. I'm sorry that this is the way it is right now, but again, I can only put up so many signs and warn people. There's better ways to do things, and this isn't the right way. 
Reporting from South End, Paul Boyd, Channel 9 Eyewitness News.